Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Why Are You an Entrepreneur? The Trials and Triumphs. I'm Maureen Edwards with Eight Simple Steps. And for those of you just tuning in for the first time, this is where I bring you rock star entrepreneurs on a monthly basis. You know, we used to do this weekly, but now it's even more special because our guests are some of the best of the best, bringing you words of wisdom, best practices. They are some of the hottest entrepreneurs who are moving, shaking, making things happen. And if you are one of those entrepreneurs out there who's looking for inspiration and are on that journey, this is the place to be. And tonight is no exception. I have Kelly Williams. And oh my gosh, this is about faith, fun, family, and I think we're in for an amazing conversation. She is the founder of Just Kelly Coaching. And uh, Kelly, I have to welcome you. I'm so excited, especially with some of the information I just found out. So <laughs> welcome. I'm glad you're here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to have this conversation. I think it's going to be really fun. Well, let's uh, dive in. We've got 30 minutes and I always start out with, you know, being an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. It's actually so hard. So why are you doing it? Oh, and I, I sometimes ask myself the same question. <laughs> why am I an entrepreneur? I'm an entrepreneur because I believe I was born to be one. Um, it's something I've done ever since I was eight years old. I've got memories of crocheted bracelets, trying to, I'm going to say, pedal them. And it's in my DNA. And I'm an entrepreneur because it helps provide the best life for me. Awesome. Now, were you ever in a corporate arena at all and then transitioned out of it? Yeah. So when I was 19 years old, I started working for my local county government and I stayed with them until just a few years ago. And so I had always been an entrepreneur, even while I had had a nine to five. So I, I got to juggle what it was like, you know, getting up in the morning and going to work, excited to be at work, but also excited about this thing that I wanted to either venture into or explore or take a stab at. And, you know, I've experienced the, you know, putting the children to bed and the long nights, um, you know, working on business. So yes, I was in the government arena until I stepped away from there. And so how did you transition out of that and take the leap and say, you know what, I'm out of the government, I'm going to go full force and run my own business. How did yeah. that come about? So I have actually been entertaining the idea of leaving, um, but kind of just comfortable with the security of not so much the paycheck, believe it or not. It was the um, the benefits, the benefits, the medical and that sort of thing. And um, one day an opportunity presented itself in 2021. And I told my husband, I was like, I think it's time. And he was like, I've been waiting for you to say that. <laughs> Um, in addition to our coaching business, we have a couple other businesses. So um, it happened very abruptly. Um, there was no real planning uh, in the traditional sense. The only planning I did for my business was work on my business consistently for many years prior. And so I had some systems in place. Things, had, things did change and shift after I walked away, but I had that consistency. I had already been um, building business online. And so it just allowed me the time freedom to do it in a way that best served um, our family with my business and my clients in my business. What business you started that you said, all right, I'm going full force into this. What was the business that you started? Well, it wasn't the business. It wasn't that I started it. It was, it's my coaching business. And I had been coaching. I've been coaching for a very long time, actually. I was coaching before they called it coaching. I was coaching when they still called it consulting. Okay. <laughs> no, there's no such a thing. But uh, yeah, that actually started in 2012. Um, I had opened up a brick and mortar store and people wanted to know, how do you do this? And you got a family and you're um, involved in ministry at your church, like heavily involved. Like, how do you juggle all these things? And so I found myself back then um, telling people just what I did and sharing my experience, it, not really realizing that I was coaching them and encouraging them and helping them with tools 
and strategies to then go out and do the same thing. So what have you found to be the most difficult thing about entrepreneurship, especially for those people who just have started going and doing it? What, what did you find to be the hardest thing? Woo wee. So your viewers um, are getting ready to get a taste of reality. But for me, the hardest part of entrepreneurship is suffering through the process. The actual journey can be quite difficult and not that it's not rewarding. That's not what I'm saying. But there are lots. There's lots of things that as an entrepreneur you face, you're challenged with, you have to overcome, you have to press through, you have to navigate, you have to learn, you have to fail and rise again. And that journey, sometimes you get tired and um, you even have moments at times. And, and I'm going to speak for myself, but I do know that there's others that that feel similarly, but I'm going to speak for myself. There's times where you're like, this is, is this really worth it? And that's not a typical answer that you hear from somebody in the entrepreneur space, to, especially online. Online, they have you thinking that everything is roses and sunshine every single day. And it's not like that. So when you know when you had your nine to five, I'm just going to call it nine to five, you had them taking care of all the back end, everything. They, they, they took care of payroll. They took care of you know all the ins and outs that go with business and employment. Then when you venture out on your own, now you're faced with you've got to pay your taxes. You've got to set aside, you know, do a forecasting and, you know, create you create your schedule now versus having somebody else create your schedule. And I'm going to say that uh, for some people, not for everybody, but for some people that takes some getting used to, you know, mm -hmm. you your whole career knowing that, OK, I've got to be at work at nine and I get off at five and now you've got what appears to be flexibility and you realize, oh, I need boundaries and yeah. I, need a, I need like a real schedule for myself. I need to make sure that my communication is effective with the people that live in my home, my spouse, um, the stakeholders in my business. I need to make sure that I'm communicating how business is supposed to be run. And um, that was a little, that was a little challenging in the beginning. And I have to tell you, as long as I've been in business, I'm still ironing that out as, as I develop, I'm always developing and learning what that looks like for, for myself in this season. Could you give, you know, people out there who maybe are struggling, do you have maybe some tips for those people out there who maybe are like, whoa, I did not expect this at all. Because I think that's very important what you're saying, because freedom and flexibility are like the number one thing I hear people like I'm owning my own business. I want to be my own boss. I don't want anybody telling me what I want to do. But then when they're sitting there in their office, the day flies and they haven't gotten much done or they've been overwhelmed or what tips do you have for people to kind of rein in and keep themselves focused? Yeah. So, I, and the tips I'm going to give are the tips that I wish I would have been much more intentional about. So the first one is the boundary. So almost all the things that I've already mentioned, but the boundaries is uh, the first one. Setting up my personal boundaries that allow for me to have downtime and um, address my personal care needs. Um, boundaries around the other things in my life. I do serve in ministry quite quite heavily. <laughs> and so um, setting aside time for my faith, setting aside time for my family and creating those business hours. I'm the coach that, oh, call me anytime. And when I when I ventured out on my own um, after leaving the corporate world, like call me in the evenings didn't fly anymore. I'm available during the day now. Let's talk during the day. And I had to learn how to communicate that effectively. So the first thing I would recommend is that um, you identify the boundaries that you would like in your business. Um, the second thing I would strongly encourage someone to do as they venture out into entrepreneurship on their own is to um, get the support. And so the support is gonna look like creating a power team for yourself. Your power team might be that number, that one or two, um, 
family member or close friend that that's your cheerleader to support you. They might not be your customer. They might not be your client, but they're definitely a cheerleader. And they might even be a connector because they really, really want to cheer you on. So you want to make sure you have somebody like that in your corner because it can get lonely. Yes. <laughs> you want to make sure that got your um, your business team. So all of the professionals that you would have in, in your business. You want to make sure you have your coach, your mentor. You want to make sure that you have um, your tax person. Um, have those types of things set up as well on your power team. Then, so I'm a person of faith. I also recommend that you find who I would call wise counsel. This person might not be in business. And I know it's, you know, you see this online. They're like, don't talk to people about your business who aren't in business. They don't know. They, they can't help you. And I argue that, that I challenge that. Um, there are some people that they, they may not know about business, but they're wise with how to make decisions. They're wise with uh, what making your next move looks like. They don't need to know what, they don't necessarily need to know what the move is, but they can help guide you on making those right decisions. So boundaries would be the first thing. The second thing would be um, getting that power team together. And then the third team is, or the third team, the third thing would be to stay connected to your why and your purpose. Because when you do that, you can eliminate a lot of the struggles that can come with entrepreneurship. I wish I would have done that early on, um, especially, especially when I left my nine to five. I found myself really looking more to, I had a coach. OK, I had a I had mentors around me, but I found myself looking online for what to do next and how to do a strategy for this and how to do the next thing for that. And I found myself becoming very, very confused. <laughs> and I right. felt like I stepped away from why I was really doing what I was doing. And I know, you, you know, some, someone might say, no, you're just, you know, uh, Googling this. X, Y, and Z. I'm Googling that online or I'm, you know, looking this up on Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever. But it's very easy for you to see somebody else's vision based off of what they put online and you lose sight of your own vision. And so I found myself having to go back to that place several times, like often having a self check, like, OK, why are you doing this? What is the most important thing? And so I even shared in my I have a community of women. Um, and we meet regularly. And I even shared it in the community, I want to say it was last week, I said to them that um, more than anything, and this is part of my why, but more than anything, I want for them to far surpass any, any uh, achievement I ever make in business. They're all in business doing their own thing. But my why is so that I can help create um, purposeful and kingdom driven entrepreneurs um, here on earth, help help them live in purpose and live on purpose. And if I'm doing that, then I'm doing my job. And that's my why. I found myself getting away from that and I had to go back there several times. So um, stay in purpose. Remember those boundaries. And just that fast, I forgot the other one. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And then have your power team. So power team, thank have you. Your power team. Um, I love every one of those. And and I always say you can't like Google your way to a business, guys. All right. You and I have so many people who want to build a business off of Google. And I think it's really important. Stay off Google. Go ahead. It's within yourself. Um, go back in. It's in your gut. Pull it out. And sometimes you need to go back to your gut as a reminder, like you did many, many times. So, um, and Letitia says good stuff. And we have Janelle who has said hello tonight. Um, so welcome to both of you. And and I have to say that, you know, I, I love the fact that you said to surround yourself with a team because it's very isolating. And, um, and it's so funny, haven't you seen so many people who try and talk with people who are not entrepreneurs and they don't understand and then you get upset they don't understand what i'm doing how can they don't know what they don't know so you've got to have a community you know surround yourself with with a community of entrepreneurs they understand your journey they're walking you know through it with you so so share some successes with me i want you to talk me through a success you've had and you know how how did you get there 
Okay, so I'm going to share the most recent success that I, it's funny because I uh, shared with my lady, I was like, I can't even talk about this because I serve women, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. <laughs> so a few years ago, I hired a VA and my VA, he um, it was a, it was a male. Um, he, you know, he was with me. He helped me, you know, with my graphics and images and joined all my live streams and helped me, you know, with comments and questions. Like he was great, 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 great. So he and I, we worked together for maybe about two years and um, we still check in with each other every so often. And I knew that he did a, a Zoom and invited people who wanted to learn how to be a VA and it was successful. I knew he said it was successful. And, um, but he reached out to me and he said, remember that Zoom I did? Well, there was 98 people on that Zoom who said they wanted to be a VA. I said, what? And he said, and 46 of them decided that I would be the one to teach them how to do it. And so then he began to say, thank you so much for, how you've shown up online teaching people how to build a business because I went from being your VA working for somebody else to now starting my own business. I was like, Oh my goodness. And I was very, 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 very excited. Um, and encouraged. And like, works. <laughs> so that was a major success. Another major success, um, I must say, is um, even though this year has been quite busy for our family business-wise, um, this year has been a, a great success. Um, we've had some challenges in our family um, with illness, um, out-of-town relatives, and um, I, I call it a success that we've been able to support ourselves financially enough where we can take the time away to go and attend to our family who was ill out of state, um, to take vacations with our children, um, and do other things that align spiritually in my life. It's not, my successes are not reduced to just what happens in the business. I'm a lifestyle management coach, so everything is integrated. And um, I think those are some of the most recent and some of the biggest successes that I've had to date. You know, what you said is incredibly important because I think sometimes as business people, we check off our successes by the next best client we have and how much money that proposal brought in, how much that that coaching session brought in, how many products I just sold and how big that order was. And so I think that's all important because we do have to bring in revenue. But I think sometimes we need to take a step back to, and sometimes it's the little wins. And I just recently had a client who was not um, very adept at digital marketing and she put her first ebook together. That was a huge win of learning. And now she's building an email list and just uh, unbelievable how many subscribers she has. Sometimes we have to look at things like that, that will maybe drive revenue later. But at the same time, I'm looking at this, you're talking about life balance and entrepreneurship is so much more than just revenue. You're talking about family time. Let's, let's talk about freedom. Isn't that, you know, to be able to take care of family who's sick, to go on vacations. Yeah. I talked to you about how I packed up everything and I'm living in a bungalow on the ocean right now. Entrepreneurship has given me that luxury, right? So this is why we do what we do. And I think that's really important that sometimes we need to have a mindset shift that yes, we do need to pay our bills, right? So I think that's that's really important. I wanna, um, I, I, I need to mention this because I have not had an entrepreneur on the show who has 10 kids. <laughs> And I, I learned that like just as we're going live and I'm like, all right, let's let's regroup for a minute because a lot of people will go into entrepreneurship to have that that work life balance, especially with a family. And and that that is a huge part of it, especially as mom. But how in the world, even with a couple kids in a business, it's hard with 10 kids. You must be the most amazing organized time management like 
how do you run a business? Like how many hours a day? And you must be the most productive person during those hours. Explain to me how you manage this and how this can help other people manage their business. <laughs> well, first of all, um, I cannot do it without prayer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the first, first and foremost. But um, I do try to keep a, a schedule where I'm pretty productive during the day. My husband and I are both entrepreneurs. So we're both home during the day while the children are away at school. Um, and we only have two in the house. Our All of our other children are all out of the house, believe it or not. They're all older. Okay. <laughs> They're, we've got grandchildren even. Yeah, married, all the things. So um um, I do have, I keep business hours, if you will. Um, after I drop them off, I'll work and I'll work until about 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then generally everything is about my my family. Um, you are a wonderful exception right now because I typically am, it's all family time in the evenings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel really honored. Thank you. You gave me five o'clock during dinner. Yes, <laughs> yes. like, oh my gosh, she's at five o'clock. Do I even want to sign up for this? No, it's <laughs> okay. So they're older. Like the little ones are older now a little bit. So uh, we were able to make some adjustments. Not a problem at all. But um, yeah, I keep business hours. And um, I, I try to set up systems um, so that we, we just, you know, things just go and go and schedules and clear communication. Um, again, being an entrepreneur, sometimes, you know, things can happen spur of the moment. And the ladies that are part of my community, they know I have to, on occasion, I might have to cancel, a, you know, a community um, gathering that we have because something else has, has happened. And that's okay. That's part of that, that freedom and that flexibility. But, um, yeah, I, I, we have a, a, a standing menu. Like, you know, we're not super creative with dinner right now. <laughs> with certain days, we eat certain things and it works for our family. Um, I try to um, spend time with my husband on a Monday or a Friday. Like we try to sneak in day dates. Um, but yeah, I try to systematize the whole the whole process. It doesn't always flow exactly as I want for it to, if I can be transparent. But it always goes exactly how it's supposed to, because a lot comes out of it. Interesting opportunities, meeting new people, um, experiences that we wouldn't ha have had had we not, you know, gone with the flow a little bit. So, um, yeah, I, I've run a, a I don't know if I would call it a tight ship. Some people might call it, the kids would call it a tight ship. But um, yeah, I, I, it runs pretty smoothly. We've been doing this for a minute. So yeah, it runs pretty smoothly over here. So we say life is messy. Entrepreneurship is even messier. And then you combine the two and you've got to have some flexibility in there. So, <laughs> I, uh, I have to say so. So there are a lot of coaches out there, um, a lot of consultants, a lot of agencies. Um, just curious, are there any marketing platforms out there that you're finding, you know, to be, you know, pretty, pretty successful for you? Um, good conversion opportunities that you may recommend out there for some of the others? LinkedIn, you want yeah. to stay connected on LinkedIn. Um, I feel that that's great for all, all of the above. Um, the yeah. one thing about LinkedIn, and I share this um, often with people that ask me about my experience on that platform, um, I share with them that the people on LinkedIn, they are very serious about their business, whatever their business is. For some, their business is working a nine to five, but they're serious about it. They're serious about leveling up. And so I choose to be in places where I notice other people are very intentional about their show up. And I serve um, and... Yeah, we think conversions, sales, all the things, um, meeting new people, networking, all of that. Then the other one that I'm finding to be very interesting, and I'm just, I'm new to this, is YouTube and creating content that can be evergreen. Maybe it's not, um, but it's what's needed now. And just the new people that are following and connecting. And so I might see them on YouTube and then I might see them come on over to LinkedIn and you know, um, I might, they might end up following me on Instagram. So 
I know I don't, whenever time this, uh, other people see this because I know people might catch this on the replay, you know, I know Meta's going through some things, um, some changes, but um, one thing that has been pretty consistent for me has been LinkedIn since I've been on it um, for a few years. And um, I, now I, now this YouTube is starting to, starting to uh, snowball, so. Um, I absolutely love LinkedIn. It, it is my absolute favorite platform, but it definitely depends on who your business is, who your target audience is, and, you know, but I definitely feel like LinkedIn is, is an amazing platform. And uh, I do know that you wanted people to follow you on your YouTube station, your YouTube channel, right? Yes. Um, so I'm actually on YouTube as Just Kelly. J-U-S-T-K-E-L-L-E-E. -E. And so I happen to be a coach who is in the faith space. So you can find me over there doing corporate prayers. And um, as of late, I've been doing a series, um, Hustle to Harmony, um, taking people from the hustle to a lifestyle of harmony for them, um, mainly geared towards a, a Christian faith-based um, entrepreneur. But it, the principles are the principles. And so, yeah, come on over to YouTube and give me a follow and check me out. Awesome. So, Kelly, can you share who your ideal person who you serve? So if somebody would like to get in touch with you, who who is the ideal person? Oh, thank you for that. So if somebody wants to get in touch with me, they are somebody who is ready to go to the next level. They're a person of faith. They may be a mother. They may be a, a wife or they may be single. Um, but they are somebody that's saying I, things are OK. Maybe they can be a, they're OK. Maybe they can be a little bit better. But I'm ready to go, dig deep, learn, explore, grow and take my life. To the next level, not just business, not just marriage, not just motherhood, but take my life to the next level. I want to be impactful. I want to be effective and I want to use my influence so that others are able to get to that place that they are supposed to go as well. That's my ideal plan. Is there um, a way that they can get a hold of you? Do you have an email or a website you'd like to share? Well, actually, what I would love to do, um, I hang out on LinkedIn. So I would okay. invite your audience, if they want to connect with me on LinkedIn, just say that they they uh, view the, you know, view the live stream and connect with me. My um, my name is Just Kelly also on LinkedIn, or they can look me up by my name, which is Kelly C. Williams. Awesome. So I was wondering if you would leave our audience with a, a favorite quote um, of inspiration that that you like, that maybe you follow or that, you know, if things aren't going well, that you you think about. Is there something that that hits you that maybe even of prayer? Yeah. So I have a default scripture. I just absolutely love the scripture that says with all things, with, with God, all things are possible. And so when things get tough with God, it's all possible. When things are, are going well and you want to celebrate, guess what? With God, things are possible. So that's my favorite scripture. As my default, I go to it all the time. I love it. I love it. So, you know, this is, um, this is about rock star entrepreneurs and um there are amazing things said about you on linkedin i'm getting amazing stuff here in the chat people are saying community is key yes community is so important coach kelly williams community is amazing um they put your youtube channel in there follow coach kelly this is Letitia tate is she one of your clients i have a she, her and I, well, her and I have, she loves you. She's a follower. She, she, she is a, a sister colleague is what I would, I would rather call her. They, yes, some of them, we work together, but more than anything, we're just like sister colleagues. So, yeah. Awesome. So awesome. <laughs> um, and she loves that scripture, too. We have Mimi who has tuned in and she says hello. Um, and so we've had some some great people who have have been here tonight and communicating. So thank you so much for for being here. And I have to say, Kelly, thank you so much. Um, we're just about wrapping up and I want to 
want to say so much that I appreciate you kind of moving dinner to a little bit later tonight and uh, and showing up. And uh, I'm so glad that I reached out to you and saw all the amazing content you were putting out there. And uh, I hope everybody reaches out to Kelly. Uh, we absolutely have had a wonderful conversation. So thanks for being here tonight. Oh, thank you so thanks. much for having me. I appreciate you. Everybody, we are wrapping up for those of you who are entrepreneurs walking this journey. I hope you found some words of wisdom from Kelly tonight. I know that I certainly have. And uh, I really encourage you that if you need a community, if you need mentorship and coaching, please seek it out. Entrepreneurship is very hard. Find your people. Find your people. All right. And if you need anything from me, just reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook. You can go to 8simplesteps.net. Go ahead. Let's chat. If you're finding yourself uh, really having trouble converting customers, you most likely don't have a marketing problem. You're probably having a messaging issue. So let's talk. All right, everybody. I will see you next month with another rock star. And I have to say, I get a lot of questions. Why do I only have female entrepreneurs on here? Okay, we're going to have a gentleman next month. So get ready. <laughs> it's not just a female show, but I'm loving my lady entrepreneurs. They're amazing. So thank you so much, Kelly. And uh, I will see everybody next month. Good night.